one small issue that you should, I should discuss with you. Uh, yesterday I looked at the website, at the description of my talk, and to my horror I have learned that I should be able to deliver this talk in German if the audience wishes, so uh, this is not going to happen. <laughs> uh, then I, I, I guess I was terrified and I started to think about it as an engineer, how can, could I do it? And I had found out that the title of this, the topic of this, this talk and the way it's organized would allow me to do it. I would just show you a bad code, I would say nine, then I would show a good code, and I say yeah. Uh, it's like polyglot speaker, kind of. But uh, I hope we'll be better off, uh, I think we'll be better off if I, if I speak English. That, that's what I would like to do. Now, uh, welcome to this talk devoted to tasks. Uh, my name is uh, Tomek Kaczanowski. I came from Krakow, from Poland. And I'm really happy that you have joined this talk. Now, a few words about me. Um, since I would say a few years, I'm really, really interested in testing, especially in low-level unit testing, but recently also in integration and end-to-end -end tests. And I'm happy to share my knowledge and experience uh, as a speaker, a little bit as a trainer, and also blogging and, and, and such. Um, I have already told you that I will show you some code some code, bad code, and then the code improved. Uh, there is one important thing that I would like to, you to remember. Uh, for the purpose of this talk, I have distilled some short snippets of the code to illustrate some ideas. Uh, in reality, this code is much more complex. There are a lot of distractions, a lot of other stuff. The second thing is that you see only one example. In reality, there were 20, 50, I don't know, 100 tests like this which means that the small issues that you see uh, could be very painful in reality. And also the refactoring that I, I uh, showed, the, the things that you could do to improve the situation, they would improve situation a lot. It's hard to notice it looking at few lines of code, but please have this in mind. And all the examples are taken from real code that I have gathered uh, via code review, browsing some real life projects, uh, there are no, you know, made-up bank account examples. Uh, yeah, and please uh, interrupt me anytime you wish. If you ask questions, uh, whatever. Uh, I will not ask you who writes tests because uh, today I have learned that even the flying shark used the unit. So uh, I believe we all do write tests. But I will ask you a different question. The question is. What do you get in return when you write tests? Why are you doing it? Quality. The quality, which means? Working application. Working application. Yeah, OK. Anything else? Are you getting the trust in the code to refactor it and to make it better? OK. Sure. Any Fast other reason? Fast feedback. Excuse me? Fast feedback. Fast feedback, OK. Mm -hmm. What else? I think there are more points. Yes, some, some idea. Better design because better if design. If I couldn't test it, the design. Uh, uh, if I am able to test it really well, the design is probably good. Okay, okay. I agree with everything you said. I just prepared my version of what you just said. First, we want to catch bugs, and in general, we use tests as a way to prove that the system works. Yes, all tests are green, which means we can sleep and be happy that the system works. That's a simplification, but that's the idea. Now, the second thing is that uh, the wind of change is blowing all the time. The managers are introducing new features and so on and so on. Uh, tests help us to survive this change. That, that's very similar to the first point, but somehow different. There's one thing that I would like to point out here. Uh, when you have tests in your system and the changes come, there are two things you are interested in. First, the test should tell you what is broken now. That, that's the idea. The safety net of tests, which will tell you if the changes you have introduced really change only this one part or maybe broken the whole system. But there is also another thing that we should care about. How many tests now you have to rewrite, update, delete, and so on and so on. Okay? That's, that's about the change. 
there's one more aspect that you haven't mentioned, but DevOps brought up this. I mean, the documentation. Yeah? Who likes to update the documentation? One hand? No, you're, you're just scratching your head. Okay. Uh, I think we could agree that we are, as developers, we are not really keen on updating the documentation. The documentation sucks, Java docs lie, and so on and so on. Yeah? That's, the, that's, the state. that's the fact. So many people believe that if you have strong tests, well-written tests, you have a lit documentation. That's, that's some people uh, think so. Also, uh, you have already mentioned design. We have test-driven design. We have a very strong, um, we have this idea that the tests are not really for verifying, but rather for coming with better design. We will not concentrate on this one. We will rather concentrate on the on the three, uh, rest, rest three, but still that's a very valid point and very, very important. Now we will soon see some tests, some example of code, and I would like you to think about them with regard to this rule, this uh, issue. Do they really test something important? Will they, su will they su survive the changes? And do they document anything? Um, could someone uh, remind us what is internal, external quality? Internal quality is code quality. Internal quality is code quality, meaning it's something we developers face. Yes. It's the, it answers the question, do I like work with this code? It answers the question, are there such dark places where you send only new people because no one else will go there? Yeah, that's, 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 that's it. Uh, external, the opposite. W what your client thinks about your product. Is he? Is it working according to specification? Is it fun to work with? Is it reliable? Blah 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 blah. blah. Hmm? Okay. Now the point is that the tests influence both these sides of of, um, of quality, but in different ways. Uh, that's of course also a simplification. But uh, if you have strong unit tests, then probably your code is well encapsulated. The methods are small, focused, and so on and so on. Probably you can work with it. Uh, but it doesn't tell much about the, the, the client perspective. Does it do something useful? Maybe, maybe. There is a chance, but, but not, that's not necessary. On the other end, if you have strong end-to-end -end test, user test, uh, system test, whatever you call them, you look at the system from client perspective, but it doesn't tell you if you are able to maintain, to change, if it's fun to work with the code. Okay? That's obvious stuff. Um, now the penalty. Um, we all know that if we don't write tests, sooner or later we'll, we are in big trouble. Uh, first of all, other people will yell at us, managers, scrum masters, whatever. Uh, but the second thing is that we will be in this spaghetti code or whatever you call it, uh, which is a depressing experience. So that's the reason for writing tests. Unfortunately, even if you do write tests, it's not a silver bullet. You still can get into big trouble. I mean, th this is a excerpt from an um, article that I would like you to, to scan through. Uh, these guys, they, they really wanted to write tests. They believe that by writing tests, they will you know, push things forward and everything will be fine. Um, <coughs> That, that's the first part of the article. The rest was like, then after we realized that it's too much trouble, that we, we can't maintain the test, that we can't change anything, that it's too much work, they stopped writing tests at this point. Uh, a few months later, they said, no, we can't proceed any further. We have regression bugs which are killing us. Now what they did, they, they reflected on the past. They reflected on what they did, and they have realized that uh, they haven't written good tests, they just wrote some tests. Now they see how they decided, this time we will do it right. We will treat the test as a first class citizen. We will really, really write good tests. And uh, there is a Hollywood happy ending that everything was bright and cool. Okay, I think they are Americans. Yeah. But um, <laughs> the motto of this talk is, 
if we put so much effort, if we are TDD, BDD, if we write more test code than production code, then maybe we really try to do it right. Now, before we see some code, which is soon to happen, uh, there's one more thing. Uh, whenever you work on some, on some functionality, user story, ticket, whatever it is, you have to ask yourself, what is the right test that I should write to be, uh, to, 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 to make sure that this feature works, right? Should I write end-to-end uh, -end test via GUI with Selenium? Should I mock the service layer? Should I write five unit test or maybe all of them? That's a question you have to answer. Now, after you answer this question, uh, this question, you have to think about each single test, how to write it, how to write it. Should I mock or should I not mock? Should I use in memory database or maybe should I use real database? And so on and so on. And today we will concentrate on this second question. Not because it's most important, just because we will concentrate on it. Okay? But mm -hmm. please have in mind that that's only half of the story. Um, we'll go back in history right now. Because I have, uh, so, some time ago, I have announced that I'm looking for interesting test cases. And uh, one, uh, one guy uh, sent me a few tests. But, uh, and the stories like the tests were written, I think today I can say 10 years ago, uh, which uh, I haven't heard of JUnit at this time to publish. And, uh, and, and it has never been run in any continuous integration. Um, so, I would like to ask you to look up this test and now tell me what, what's wrong, okay? But I don't accept, I accept the everything answer. So what, what, what bothers you here? Too much noise. Too much noise coming from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but no more precisely what, what Okay, you can't see it. Uh, what about system out? Sorry? What about system out print line? What is it for? Test is not self validating. Probably, yeah, probably the system out is because the developer should see the logs and decide himself if it's uh, okay or not. Uh -huh. uh, what about assertions? Well, they are, but uh, if then fail. But that's an assertion. I would say. Um, yeah, okay. The test name, uh, like the documentation factor, like this, probably. Okay. Okay, good. You can do even better than this. Um, please have a look at this one. I'm not no. to much, much longer, but, but uh, the same style, I would say, so I... Just more with the exception to fail. So, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever happens, it fails. Fails for unknown reason. Uh -huh. I love the name of the test. <laughs> I hope one day he will send me the test complex or whatever, but no, no, not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, w will it fail? If you compile it and see if it fails? Uh, so now you think you know about failing tests, but no, you don't. Uh, that's my favorite. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> Maybe today on after party, the collective power of drunken brains will somehow solve the mystery, but I'm not able to. Uh, there are like ideas that maybe this test is testing some testing framework or something, but I don't know. The beauty is, oh. okay, so that, that is how we used to write tests some time ago, but things have improved mm -hmm. a lot. 
and then we will discuss more like up to date examples. But let's have in mind that we have come already come a really long and, and interesting way. Um, now we are moving into much uh, recent part. Uh, that's an important test. System admin smoke test. <coughs> and if you look at this, you will not see anything wrong uh, because I haven't shown yet. But, but uh, you see it creates some database, yeah, it's a preparation of a test. But it really looks like this. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, have, I don't know if it really happens, but I can tell you a story about this test. At some point we had this beautiful test, then a huge change came, and we, I don't know, switched databases, did some, something really deep, uh, and then we commented out this test just for a few days. That's obvious, because we are not people who just comment out the test. We will fix it very, very soon. <laughs> of course, uh, it never happened. I, I think it never happened because the, the method is not commented out, so on Jenkins it's still green, right? So why, why, why should we bother? Uh, anyway, just no, nine. Uh, another example of the same, same kind. That's the test I have enc encountered in one uh, project. I see this, you know, we will test like this. Unfortunately, that was the only test there. <laughs> <laughs> you need something more than this feeling that, yes, this time I will test. You need the whole team working on this. You need your managers to support it, to give you time, and so on and so on. Okay, okay so I, I believe the funny part are almost finished, yeah. Uh, but I, I think we can learn something from this, this test, okay? Automation, automatic verification, uh, fixing broken windows, and stuff like this. Everyday work to improve our tests, to keep them healthy, and so on, so on, keep them green. That, that's what we could learn, okay. Uh, now let's move to real issues, problem, Mm. Um, that's a that's rather a simple test because all it does it it, it verifies whether this the service returns some value that was that was previously somehow injected into it. Uh, so it's not a big deal. My question is, what, what about these objects? What, what are they for? Can you see what's the report, report for? The report is required to create traffic trends. What is traffic trend required for? Traffic trend is, uh, is to be uh, returned from some sub uh, object, right? then we verify whether it's the same traffic trend. If I see a test like this, I have thousands of questions. Why big decimal one? Why we have four dates? Does it matter? If I change big decimal one to big decimal two, would the test, the result, the, the outcome of the test differ and so on and so on. <coughs> so I would say it's a noise because what we really wanted is just, the huh? all we need is this object. Now, uh, it doesn't look so bad, but uh, now this test is um, fragile. It's uh, glued to implementation of two constructors that are completely unrelated, right? No, it's not. That's uh, answering the question, how many tests you will have to change if you change something in your system? You can make it better or, or worse. This is better. Um, on the other hand, Maybe before we, we come to this, uh, could, could someone remind what is a uh, state verification in testing? Does like the, does the state, uh, would, for example, which um, return by other methods? Okay, so state, value. you verify state when you look at the return values yeah. or the change of the state of the object. You ask object what state you are in and the object says something. Right. And the 
other form is behavior verification, which means you do what? If I, I'm looking <coughs> to um, verify if a, a, the system on the test called a collaborating object when doing something. Okay, so in the first case, in state verification, you look at the object as a black box, you put something, you take something, and you look what, what, what you've got. And in uh, the second behavior verification, you look, you look inside and you look what messages this object has sent to other objects, right? So, of course, the penalty for the second type is that if you change the way it communicates with its, its peers, then your test will have to be rewritten and so on and so on, okay? So, in this case, we have which kind of, which kind of validation do we do here? The second one, we verify. And if you look at the, at the logic of this, of this test and you realize that this model and view object is a simple map, really, that is returned to the view, then really the idea behind this test is to verify that when this map is returned, it includes the time zone, because this time zone is important for some reason. So in this case, mocking and especially verification here is an overkill which makes your test fragile, because what you really want to see is this. Does this contain something? Again, uh, nothing serious as unless uh, you have 10,000 tests like this, you change something, and ta -da. You have to uh, fix many tests. Okay, now um, we are still talking about mocks but also we move into design a little bit. Um, the, these two methods from production code, they are quite simple. They produce the URL, the parameters to the URL, right? Name equals something, timestamp equals something. Now the first one takes two parameters, the second one creates one of them. Okay, just um, a different view. Um, still the same story, we want to test the second method. Now I will show you the test that the developer has written. Uh, can you see what, what he's doing? He uh, invokes the second method and he verifies whether the first method has been called. Why is he doing that? It was not stupid, it was smart, but why? Why is it, why, why? Why couldn't he analyze the return string? Because the timestamp is not mocked, the time provider. Yep, <coughs> exactly, exactly, the time. It would be easy to say, I expect, Madame John, you name, equals John timestamp equals 999, but he couldn't uh, inject the time, right? Why? Because that's a bad design, that's why. Okay, so the motto is bad design leads to bad tests. And please tell me if, could you imagine that if you write test first, would you come up with such test? Just, <laughs> it is impossible, it's just plain impossible. Yep. And also by, by, by looking at the method name, you, you know it's something is wrong. You are verifying whether you call another method. That's really crazy. Um, that, that's the solution, probably. If you re redesign your code, <coughs> you inject this time provider, you, you are able to verify just like that. Okay. Um, Okay, that's a single responsibility principle. Um, well, you know the single resp responsibility principle for classes, which basically means that if your class can parse XML, it shouldn't also send emails because that's too much. And, uh, and here are some examples that I believe show that we can bridge this, uh, this rule also with tests. Uh, even slightly, uh, one more that explanation for those who are not 
familiar with uh, parameter I said. Uh, this means like you, you took all the pairs, all the <coughs> all this uh, tuples, tuples and, and you created many tests like this, okay? That's the basic idea. Uh, let's go back to this test. What, what I see here is testing of few things at once and I can tell it without really looking at the algorithm. I see how very generic are the names. Test query, it will get data. That, that's not, not good enough. Okay. Also, there is a very simple but still logic here. Will it be asset true or asset false? That depends. Um, I think what the developer really meant is to divide it into positive cases, negative cases, and have a test like this. Okay. Now, the naming of this test is much better. You got invalid queries got valid queries, you expect it to be valid, no, and so on. And so on. The other bonus you get is that once it fails, you know exactly what failed. Uh, as usual, when you do things the right way, you have more work to do. Sorry. But <laughs> in the longer term, you will probably benefit from this. Um, similarly, you have some kind of controller which uh, logs user to the website, whatever and you verify a few things. Has it been right directed? Has the uh, email been sent? Um, I, I don't say it's wrong, and sometimes I have doubts if I should put it in the one method or, or divide into two, but I believe that basically you should not think in terms of methods. Uh, this happens usually when you write tests after you write the method. Then you just verify what the method does. If it does five things, you verify five things in one test. That's not the point. I believe we should more think about more responsibilities. And in, in such case, you should have a test which verifies the user has been properly redirected, the emails have been sent. Now, when you change, when you do a change in the system, maybe one of these tests will fail <coughs> because something has changed. Still, it will be a very small focus change that you will have to fix. Okay. However, uh, you could argue that for some kind of integration test, end-to-end -end test, when the setup is very costly, you would be glad to put many assertions for one scenario, and I believe in some cases that, that that's okay. But for such unit tests, I think it will be better off if we divide it by responsibility, not by, by method. Um, okay, that's... Um, Interesting thing for me is that if you have more than one object of a kind in a test, like I, I would bet that 90% of developers name them user one, user two, user three. Product A, product B, that's more sophisticated method, but still. And, and my point is that at some point in time, after some changes in the system, this test fails. That, 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 that's not a test, that's the data provider, but that doesn't matter. Um, this test fails and suddenly you get this message that user dra user 2 was expected to have a permission but it hasn't got that. And now the question is, uh, sh should he really have this stuff? And you will never learn who is user 2 because how could you, right? Now, the basic thing you could do is better name your variables, come with some static values, different things you could do just to make it very clear. Now, there is no doubt if a user is logged in, he should have tried to write. Okay? Um, but that's only the beginning. Uh, this is a really, uh, I'll say, complicated integration test. Uh, the, the, it all makes sense in the dom business domain that, that it belongs to. Uh, as you see, there is this pattern, one, two, three, that I don't like, so I started to refactor it by changing names. Uh, only after I have changed the names, I have realized there is a bug here. But you can clearly <coughs> see, because it's in blue. Can you see the bug? Yep. Uh, but the, you couldn't have seen it if, if I haven't told you and no, no blue color here. The thing is that this bug has not affected the test because that, that, that the case where this 464 uh, entries from United States were not to be counted. 
but still the test had not tested what we think it tests, okay? And I believe all because it's the copy of paste and domain one, two, three, it's very easy to make a mistake. I have seen it a few times, please don't do it. Uh, probably in case of this test, it should have been split into a few more tests, that's another case. But uh, my point is that if in your test you need to create two objects of, the, of one kind, it's probably because they differ significantly. You have a VIP client and you have client without money. You have product, I don't know, with bonus and product without bonus. Something is different. Please name them so we can see the difference. One, two, three is not a good uh, option. Uh, similarly, um, I have heard that this is called a Boolean trap. Like no one knows what it means, right? Like question, what kind of server have we just created? True for server. Uh, of course you can look into names of parameters. Maybe they will tell you, maybe not. Maybe you will have to dig in. Uh, we have no JavaScript, of course. So, so uh, that might uh, take some time. There are many ways that you can improve the situation. Just make it readable on the first look, like like this. Well, Java starts in the task type, so you have to do a lot of stuff. You can do like this. Ah, the server, it's no SSL, okay. <coughs> you can invest into private methods, but this is this has a shortcoming. Like, like you have too many combinations, you will not be able to come with um, good names, probably. Uh, if you are really desperate, you can come with a builder and be very flexible in a way you create stuff. The, the beauty of the builder is that you are the master of this DSL. You just uh, create it the way you like it, so you can read it like a poetry of almost. Many ways to make things very clear. I want no SSL server which responds with final. Um, we have just talked about the names of variables. Let's see the names of test methods, um, which are important from two reasons, main reasons. Uh, first, when the test fails, it would be nice to know just what happened, what functionality is not working. Uh, second, uh, I believe there is a strong connection between the name and the quality of the test. I have some proof here. Uh, yeah, that's 1,000 words. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Um, a, a proof, a first proof. Um, what does it test? It's just four lines. What does it work in your system when the test fails? Operation doesn't work. I've been in the project for one year and a half and I have no clue what uh, this is. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, My observation is that if you, for some reason, still stick to old JUnit requirement to prefix with test, then you come up with names like this, test operation, test query, test service, test something. Uh, and it makes you put too many things there. I would encourage you to use more sophisticated names describing the scenarios. What should happen in such and such case? There are different variants of this. This is the one that I like find the one that your team is, will enjoy, but definitely it will make you focus because you can't put too many things into such methods. You just can't. Uh, now, the pictures to <coughs> engrave in your mind. I, I don't mean my, my wardrobe looks like this, but uh, there's something about it. Now, now another proof, real. What's the documentation value of this test? It's negative, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have made, made some effort to try to see what it's doing and so on, and I believe that's uh, kind of valid, but definitely we could do better, right? Just dividing into, into parts. And maybe also renaming some variables, but just let's leave it. So once again, 
I, I would really encourage you to try to come with the scenario to try to test. I, I, I focus on this particular business case, whatever. Uh, okay. Uh, as you know, each test is like three parts. You arrange stuff, create objects, set up servers, blah, blah, blah. Then you act, which means you execute a method, send REST request or something. Then you assert, you verify whether things are good or bad. Uh, usually the problematic part is the building, the setting up and the assertion. The execution is simple, the execution is one line usually. Um, now we will talk about the assertive part. Uh, I'm really sorry that the last line is... Uh, So you see there is this, the server is prepared, configured, blah, blah, blah. Then we do the, the deploy, and then we verify. Where is the assertion? Last line. Last line. So what, what's this? Sound low. Low level noise, I would say. Yeah? What, what can we do about this? Extract method. Extract method is the first idea that I will shoot some uh, criticize, but I agree, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should hide it somehow. I, I have chosen another path, but very, very similar. I have uh, invested in the custom assertion because it makes uh, it really readable. I, I don't know if you are, uh, if you know this type of assertion. If you use tools like Humcrest or Fast Fluent Assertions, then apart from the default assertions, assert true, assert false, assert not null, and so on, you get the possibility to write your own assertions, which uh, usually is not very uh, useful in many tests, but when it comes to more like business level tests, it's just great. Because like here, even if you know nothing about the business domain, you could just read this test, right? And just, I would like this file to be on the server and to make sure that it has such and such size. I, I will not show you the code of this assertion. Uh, it, it's just like, okay, one thing. This 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 uh, this whole noise has not disappeared. This is within this enclosed within the assertion right now. But usually, the cost of writing <coughs> such custom assertion is very very low. I would encourage you to give it a try. And the result is, as you can see, uh, quite nice. Now, the question that has been asked. Why not like this? Uh, I, I don't say it's wrong. I will show you one example now when it is wrong. And I believe custom assertions are more expressive and a little bit better. But if you have no time, go with private methods, of course. Uh, now a story about the team which had no time and went uh, and chose the private method path. Um, This comes from a system, uh, from a test, integration test of a system which was quite complex. There were like three systems talking to each other. They were exchanging messages and this, uh, every system put its own like, uh, how to say, uh, some, some, uh, some state, uh, cancelled, pending, charged, and so on and so on. That was really complex. So this, this setup part was much, much longer. And then we have this assertion and uh, to somehow deal with this really complex business domain. We had many tests like this, which uh, differed slightly in the setup and, and here. And we have noticed, Max, we have noticed that the difference is mainly this, this state is still have different values because sometimes we expected the transaction to be charged, sometimes to be rejected, sometimes to be canceled and so on and so on. So obviously uh, the, this question uh, why not the private method? Of course, private method. And and uh, then the system grew. Uh, we had more tests like this. Then we have realized that from time to time, we need some additional checks. So we started to enhance this private method. Uh, at some point, the private method took um, seven parameters mm -hmm. and was lovely. Are not important, but you can 
see a logic here, right? If more than two, then check. If not, then not check. If expected, then verify zero interaction. Ooh. Um, the, the thing is that we have a complex business domain. You read it, read it, read it, trying to figure out what, what this test does, and you come into this. That, that's worse than, than not having test for logic, because you have a puzzle, yeah? It's not a documentation, it's a puzzle. Uh, so I, I, I'm not saying that <coughs> creating a private method is bad. I, I say they have its limit, their, their limits, okay? Because in my opinion, this, the real solution is with custom assertion here. Even if you know nothing about the domain, you can just read it and understand. We, um, we expect this and this and this. And this is our DSL that we can uh, choose to our like, uh, change to our liking. So in some tests, for example, this line will be present, in some not, because it's not important to, to verify this. So uh, in complex, uh, in unit tests, usually you will not use it a lot. Uh, uh, however, I, I, I use it sometimes when you, when you test collections. You have uh, objects which uh, return some complicated maps or stuff. Then sometimes I can see this assertion part iterating over map. It also is very nice to, to close it in, into custom assertion. Have a look at it. Um, similarly here, there's only assertion part. Look at the name of the test method. Is this what this test validates? Invalid transaction should be canceled. It does, but provided that the file format has not changed, right? You have 20, 30, 50 tests like this. You are in trouble if the file format changes. Um, also, it's unnecessary uh, fragile this way. Okay. Now, if you if you close it in, into this assertion or maybe private method, you will have much much less work. Even if if uh, they change the format and they send us XML, it only means we will adjust the the, the code with, within the assertion. More work as usual, better effort. Um, now, just a short reminder that uh, even if your the tools you are using for tests are really really simple, uh, there are hidden gems in the documentation. Please uh, at least scan it. Mokito, JUnit, TestNG, whatever you're using, you will find something interesting, I, I assure you. Also, there are a few other projects that you should be familiar with, probably. I have named them here, I will, I think, show you one or two. Here is the, here comes the first one, that's person Antipater. Um, th this is taken from some online tutorial. Uh, and it's meant to verify whether this last line uh, throws an exception. Of course, the test will still pass if the constructor uh, dies with this exception, right? Right? The, the, this annotation doesn't care. Uh, so there are better ways. Uh, the last one? No, it's really good. Uh, there is this library catch exception, which helps you to tell exactly where do you expect the exception. The other method is to put try catch, but it looks ugly. This is probably much nicer. Uh, then you have this assertion, this is taken from past fluent assertion, when you can say like very precisely what you expect about this exception. Uh, similarly, uh, there is no, no, no bad test here, just, just wanted to show the utility because it's not very popular. Uh, every time you, you deal with some asynchronous uh, task and you wait for this, you usually put that thread sleep or you do the polling yourself with while loop and so on, so on, so on. But this is a nice DSL which lets you specify. I will wait no more than five seconds. Every 50 milliseconds I will check if, 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 if something, okay? Just use it very nice. Um, okay, moving to the next test. Uh, what does it test?
three lines of code. Come on. Test whether in database there is one user, right? What it should tell if there is this user, this new user, right? Uh, by the way, it's very dangerous to ever rely on uh, on uh, oh Jesus, I forgot the word on exact numbers. It's 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 very dangerous. I had this case in my project. We had many tests like this, and then uh, one day we had to introduce a fake user to the database for some reason. So, so the user that is very special, it's not shown on some list, blah, blah, blah. Many tests to change and you know, the, probably what, what you want to test is, is the number increased or that you can fetch this user from database, yeah? But not if there's one user in database. That, that's, that's important to remember about this. Um, please have uh, a moment to read this, try to understand. <coughs> So, uh, in some cases, we should load some default property. In other cases, we should die with an exception if the file, if, if file which the property points to uh, doesn't exist, right? Okay, the story is like this. I have joined this project and after, I don't know, a few days, I have committed code to the repository, press the end, and this te test failed. Um, the code I have committed had nothing to do with this. What the hell happened? I'll tell you what happened. The whole team was on me like, what have you done? You new guys, what have you done? What could happen? What does the second test do? What does it do? Just, just read it. What, what, what does it do? Test the system properly. <coughs> and what has happened there? How does the unit uh, chooses the order of execution of tests? There is no order. There is no order. The order has changed because has changed, right? But the clue is that you were modifying the global properties and you haven't cleaned it, yep? Now that's here or after, but better before probably, right? But it took us some time to understand because it's not obvious, but if you work with database, if you work with properties and files, you have to clean. You have used temporary files, you have to do the rollbacks on database and such stuff. You have to remember about this. Uh, that's, a, that's not so important. It's just sometimes I'm laughing at the ceremony of BDD given when then. Like, okay, maybe, maybe I can do it a little bit shorter. But it's just my personal war against some ceremony stuff. <laughs> That that's a that's a real story, another real story from my career. Uh, these are roughly the tests that I have written. Uh, the, the idea is that you have this pager element, the one you click to go to the next page, last page, first page, and so on. And uh, it, it will. Th there are many ways you can implement this, but this one uh, it, it it like it uh, provided the offsets to the database, so the database knew what. What we, which rows to fetch, okay? So it was expected that on the zero page, uh, you get offset zero, on the first page, you get uh, offset 10. Uh, and I was quite proud of, proud of myself because I have definitely tested what happens on the zero page. I have definitely tested that you are able to go to the next page, right? No, but I thought so. And then I run this stuff no, I made it clear, I, I don't remember the unit why I did it. And the problem was that you cannot go to the second page. It just doesn't work. You are still on the first page, no matter how many times you click. I'm 
think was very wrong. Uh, the truth is I haven't written enough tests. Uh, the middle looks like this. Can you see the bump? Can you see it? Don't be shy. Can you see it or not? I can't hear you. Oh, the, there is a difference between doing like this and doing like this. Okay? It works only one time, from 0 to 10. Then, okay? So, uh, not enough testing. So, why is that? Excuse me? Why didn't you write enough tests? I was young. You were young. No, I, I, sorry, don't remember, but, but the thing is that if you, if you test something, you should test for one for two and for many, probably. Like a general rule, whatever this means. In this case, that would mean that I should also check if I can go from <coughs> page five to six or something like this. Well, one, two, and many is what you should test. Else you're doing happy path testing, not enough. Um, I don't like to write tests after the production code, but I do it very often. Uh, I think it's the most important thing is to uh, to write the test. I mean to to test every functionality. If you are able to do it before, great. If you are not, great. Just do it. Okay. I have shown you some examples here, which I would say prove that sometimes you get better design when you test first. Okay? There were some such cases. But if you know what you are doing. Maybe test last is also good. There are some reasons that I believe it's not safe to write test after. Well, you have to choose. Uh, that's not uh, what I wanted. Um, I think we are running out of time, and that's good because I'm running out of slides. So uh, I think there are many things you can remember from this talk. I hope. You will find some of them interesting, but uh, more importantly, you will find them worth your time and, and trying. I would say things like custom assertions, things like parameterized tests, uh, things like uh, the, the small libraries I have shown you, like awaitability. Uh, the idea of this talk was to show you that sometimes you just have to make a tiny little change to really improve your test. And I would encourage you to do this change. Now, thank you very much for being here with me. And I, uh, the, the, the slides will be available. And also, I will soon publish a book, a short book, like uh, exactly what related to this talk with, with some more examples that you are encouraged to read. And uh, the, it will be distributed freely as an e-book. So, so just, there is no reason not to, to fetch it. And uh, if you have some interesting examples of code, uh, test code that you could improve or, or something like this, stories about bad tests that you have made 10 times faster and so on and so on. I'll be very happy to, to hear them. So please uh, contact me. Now if you have questions, please. Do you have any recommendations about uh, front-end testing like Selenium? Uh, if I have recommendations <coughs> about front-end testing, um, well, we use WebDriver Selenium, mm -hmm. but uh, the <coughs> sad fact about uh, tests which uh, uses graphical user interface is that they are never such stable like unit tests or other. Mm -hmm. I know teams that have, have uh, very significantly lowered the expectations regarding the green color on Selenium tests because it was just not possible to, to do it right, even though they put a lot of effort in this. So uh, I think that WebDriver is now the main tool, but also there are other projects from Ruby community, from Python, which are, I think, also powerful. But if you are in the Java world, then WebDriver is probably the closest to you. So it will be pain anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah. from a lot of, lot of ARM flash and uh, quietness uh, when we program uh, and it forces us very well to 
basically think about the worst case scenarios in our method and code. Uh, what do you think about using code coverage as well? So to see what, which, what, which parts did I still have inside, which I lost in my mind. Okay. Um, uh, I use code coverage, but only in this way to find what is not tested. I never get excited about, oh, we have tested so much, because this measure is very, very poor. So I think the code coverage tools are very useful for team leads, which understand their purpose and don't uh, get wrong uh, wrong views. What, like, oh, we, we are safe because we have 80% coverage. Uh, if we have two minutes, I can tell you a story about code coverage about the guy called Alexander Dumas who wrote books like 100 years ago, maybe. Huh? He, he had a, a, a contract with his editor that every week he should write a, a story to the newspaper, Gazette of the Times, newspaper times. And, and at some point the, the editor, the, 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 this, this publisher got very angry. He said, you are sending me too short snippets. I want more. The next snippet he got was full of very short dialogues, like me, you, me, yes, you, and so on and so on. So the publisher got really angry this time and said, I will pay you by syllabs, okay? By, by, from, by letters, okay? okay. And he introduced a stop, 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 So that, that's the view on cut coverage. I mean, what you measure, measure this you get. You want cut coverage? high cost coverage, you will get it. And I have seen teams which had high cost coverage, even though that was useless. Because it was, you know, create object and you have 30% of cost coverage. <laughs> so this is a, a useful tool, but use it with care. If, if you like that tool, you can try with mutation testing, <coughs> which is much more powerful. You can just, yep. Do you know any other or better ways than coverage, something like functional coverage, or how to um, how to prove that you have made good tests? The, the only tool I know is a mutation testing that I have mentioned right now. It's a PIT test framework, PIT test org, or something like this. You will find it, mutation testing PIT. It's, uh, it works like this. It changes your production code a little bit, <coughs> runs the test, and then some tests should fail, OK? If you change uh, equals to not equals in your production code, then 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 some some tests should fail. It's much more powerful than code coverage. However, it takes m more time, even though it, it has improved a lot in, in recent years. Okay, so I, I believe that's it. If, if you uh, want some private talk later, then you are welcome. Now, thank you very much for being here. Thank <laughs> you.